All right. Hi, and welcome to the show, Russ. Hi, Marina. Nice to be with you. Happy to have the chance to chat with you. Yeah, likewise. So um, just so we're all on the same page, why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Um, I was originally a pharmacist, um, pharmacy, retail pharmacy for a number of decades, um, but I had a life-changing experience back in uh, 1980. Uh, up until that time, I was pretty much a standard American diet, fast food kind of guy and wasn't involved in health at all. But in 1980, uh, I got introduced to yoga. And through yoga, I met people who were interested in health. They read health books and health magazines and health newsletters, and they ate healthy food and they exercised regularly. And when I started getting exposed to this health-related uh, newsletters, books, and, and, and so forth. Yeah, I just absorbed it like a sponge. And I've been absorbing it ever since, and it never stops. And so I've been somewhere between passionately and neurotically <laughs> <laughs> ever since 1980. And as I got deeper and deeper into um, reading books and magazines and newsletters on health, I started to write about it, and then I started to conduct seminars on it. And, um, and so I really changed my career. From that point on, I used pharmacy as a source of income to support my passion for learning more about health and natural medicine. I've now written 15 books, I guess. I've got two books that are being edited right now. Um, and I teach a lot of seminars on natural therapies. I have a seminar on natural therapies for depression and anxiety, natural therapies for ADD and ADHD, natural therapies for lowering cholesterol, natural therapies for sleep, and on and on. So I'm the, I brand myself as the natural pharmacist. Wow, well, that name certainly seems to fit. <laughs> so where are you originally from, and when did you graduate from pharmacy school? Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin. I went to the University of Wisconsin, graduated a long, long time ago. I graduated in 1966, moved to Chicago, uh, worked for Walgreens Drugstore for a few years, got bored with pharmacy, um, went in the Peace Corps for three years and taught uh, high school and junior college level chemistry over in Malaysia for three years and uh, had some fascinating experiences getting exposed to local healers and shaman and natural medicine over in Southeast Asia. Came back to Chicago in the winter of 1975, 76 was absolutely brutal, and I'd been living in a tropical country for three years. I woke up one morning early in January in Chicago and said, winter is stupid. And I <laughs> thing I owned in my car and uh, drove to Southern California and lived for about the next 25 years in San Diego. So that's a start. <laughs> so were you licensed in all of these states? So when did you actually stop working as a pharmacist? You know, I was licensed in Illinois and California, Oregon. And uh, actually I had another, when I was living in San Diego, um, working as a pharmacist, um, I got a job offer that kind of turned my life around. Um, I was offered a job to be the hospital administrator of one of the larger alternative non-toxic cancer hospitals in Mexico. So I moved to Mexico and, and worked with alternative non-toxic cancer therapies for about six years. And as a result of that, I wrote a book titled Alternatives in Cancer Therapy, which was published by Simon & Schuster. Then I followed that up with a book titled How to Prevent Breast Cancer, uh, another Simon & Schuster published book. Um, and so from that point on, I, I got deeper and deeper into working as a natural pharmacist and having a consultation practice and diet and nutrition and lifestyle management um, and continued writing books and teaching seminars and just moved forward ever since then. Wow, that sounds like an amazing opportunity. How did you fall into that role? Um, my first book was titled Mind Food and Smart Pills. And it was the, published by Doubleday. It was the first book of its kind uh, about the um, drugs and nutrients and, uh, and uh, herbal products that can increase intelligence and memory and learning and um, slow down the process of brain aging. And the founder of the hospital in Mexico wanted to work with me 
and make some of the products I talked about in my book available through mail order from Mexico. And uh, after we had a meeting with him, he also offered me this job of being a hospital administrator down in Mexico. And so that's kind of how that all got started. It just dropped in my lap and it changed my life. Wow, that's amazing. So how was it, you know, filling that role, like from a pharmacy, retail pharmacy background into a hospital administrator? It was a fascinating learning curve, and um, I just got deeper and deeper into alternative cancer therapies and realized that there's really a lot of good work and, and good therapies that are available, um, for, unfortunately not in the United States so much, but um, we had a, quite an integrative program in Mexico. Um, everybody got intravenous nutrients. Um, intravenous DMSO and hydrogen peroxide, um, a detoxification program, organic health food uh, diet, and so there's a, just a wide range of things that we offer people. I would say that about 50% of our patients were patients that had already had multiple rounds of chemotherapy and radiation and surgery in the States, and their doctors had said, there's nothing else we can do for you, and get your affairs in order, and they would come down to Mexico. The other half of our patients were an individual who had seen their parent or their grandparent go through the horrible side effects of radiation and chemotherapy, and they wanted no part of it themselves, so they would come down immediately, and we were their first choice for therapy. And I would say that probably well over 90% of the patients that came to us got significant benefit and an improvement in their quality of life. That does not mean they were long-term cures or survivors. Uh, but many people came down to our hospital and their doctors had said, we got three to six months to live. And we would get three or four or five years of fairly decent quality life extension. So even though that's not a, a cure or a long-term remission, um, it certainly improved their quality of life. And so we consider that a win from that perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it sounds like a lot of the patients came down from the United States? Yeah, I would say probably 80% or so, a few from Canada and then a few from other parts of the world. Wow, that's amazing. So were you able to conduct any kind of clinical research while you were down there? No, I I wasn't able. We didn't have the funds to do that, um, unfortunately. Um, and in 19, I was down there from 1988 to 1994. In 1994, the Mexican government started to create some problems for me with immigration, my immigration mm-hmm. status. And I'd been down there for six years, and it's very stressful to be just totally focused on cancer therapy. And, and I was also feeling disengaged from my own culture, and I wasn't able to follow my interest in alternative therapies. We didn't have good internet connections down there. And so it was time for me to transition back to the States. And so I came back to San Diego and and opened a new practice as a nutritionist and a a health coach and started doing more research. And I I actually then got on a a passionate quest and ended up writing a book called Drug-Induced Nutrient Depletions. And this is really a kind of a, a classic landmark reference book for physicians and pharmacists and and other healthcare professionals teaching people what nutrients are depleted by the drugs they take. And what happens often is that people take a drug expecting it's going to help them, and instead it starts to deplete nutrients and creates more health problems. And the example I use is consider a woman who's been taking oral contraceptives for six or seven or eight years, seemingly without any problems. And all of a sudden, over the last four to six months, she's continually and increasingly complaining to her her spouse or her significant other, honey, I've got no energy. I just can't drag myself out of bed in the morning or I can hardly get through the day. She's not likely to realize that oral contraceptives deplete um, coenzyme Q10 and selenium, and vitamin C, and lipoic acid, and vitamin B12, and all of these nutrients are involved at some level in energy production. And a depletion of any one of them can impact your energy production, and oral contraceptives deplete all of them. And she's not likely to connect the dots and realize that it's the medication she's been taking seemingly without problems over time that are now starting to cause a problem. 
And when I wrote the Drug-Induced Nutrient Depletion Handbook, I was astounded when I learned that oral contraceptives deplete more nutrients than any other class of drugs. And so I started to realize why women have more depression and more sleep problems and so forth. And that caused me to write a book called The Pill Problem, which teaches women how to avoid the side effects from oral contraceptives. So it kind of just was a domino effect and it just kept on going. Wow. So could you tell me a little bit more about how you wrote the book? How did you come across these uh, data about the nutrients? Thousands of hours of computer research. Um, unfortunately, when I was writing the book, uh, San Diego was one of the first cities in the United States to have high-speed internet access. And so I signed up for it right away and had access to PubMed. And back then, I had to pay for my access to PubMed. But um, I would just scan the PubMed databases and other medical databases for nutrients and the nutrients that are depleted by those, those drugs. And drug after drug after drug with nutrient after nutrient after nutrient took an enormous amount of time. And yet I pulled together, I probably got over 500 scientific references in the, the Drug-Induced Nutrient Depletion Handbook. And I found that a lot of this information had been in the scientific literature for a long time. But nobody had ever taken the time to go through all the scientific literature and pull it all together. And so that's what I did. Wow. So was a lot of the information using case studies or it was uh, like, long, like big trial? Well, good, good question. Um, a lot of the studies are observational studies where a, a savvy, alert clinician notices that one, one or several of his or her patients who are taking the same medication are complaining about the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. And a number of his or her patients who aren't taking that drug aren't getting those symptoms. And so they do a small clinical trial and they have a group of patients taking the medication, a group of patients who are control patients not taking it, and they do blood level tests, and they look at something like vitamin B vitamins and vitamin C or various minerals and find out, whoa, people taking the drug have lower levels of several nutrients, and they, they write it up and publish it. But what we find is that there are a lot of drugs that don't have information about nutrient depletions because nobody's done the studies. And drug companies are the people that have the deep pockets and the enormous resources to do studies but they're not going to fund a study that tells you and me that their drugs causing nutrient depletion. So um, unfortunately, there are a lot of drugs that have not been researched in terms of nutrient depletions. And if I could wave my magic wand and if I had a higher profile in the scientific community, I'd love to see the Food and Drug Administration make it mandatory for drug companies to do research on drug induced nutrient depletions for their medications as part of the new drug approval process. But I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> Absolutely. That sounds like a good way of gathering that information. I certainly didn't get this information when I was in pharmacy school. Right. And I don't think I was even aware of the book. And it's published by LexiConf, which is very famous as a drug resource. So, um, so how do you think, how, do you, did you incorporate that into your practice, like counseling people on these nutrients? Sure. Uh, for years, I was a retail pharmacist. And I probably sold more vitamin C and more coenzyme Q10 and more magnesium to customers than any other pharmacist in the country. Because when I did counseling for patients, I would engage them in a discussion and say, the medication you're taking is depleting some nutrients. And I would advocate taking the appropriate nutritional supplements. And, and people really appreciate it when you take some time to give them a little information that's going to help their health outcomes. And Nutritional supplements, the appropriate ones, will make the medications work better and decrease the likelihood that side effects will, will develop over time. So it's really a, a win-win situation. The patients, the customers are very happy that you've spent some personal time with them. It builds your credibility and their loyalty to the pharmacy and to, your, and to the pharmacist. But it also, the, the pharmacy is making a higher profit margin on the sale of nutritional supplements than the copays they make on most of the prescriptions they sell. So it's really a win-win situation all the way around. And I realize that most pharmacists in chain drugstore environments 
don't have the time to engage in a lengthy discussion with each patient about the nutrients that are being depleted. But I would try to squeeze it in as often as I could, and I had some little handouts that I printed out that, uh, for different types of medications that would alert people to this information. So, and unfortunately, the Drug Induced Nutrient Depletion Handbook and my other book on this topic, which is called The Nutritional Cost of Drugs, which is written more for the lay public rather than for healthcare professionals, both of those books are out of print now, but I do have a PowerPoint educational program with all of this information available, and so that's something I've been working on. Great, great. So, um, can I ask you a bit of a controversial question? Sure, I love controversy. <laughs> <laughs> so, as part of either your pharmacist career or as a personal health coach, did you advise people supplement um, while they're on these medications, or did you have a goal of weaning them off the medications that were problematic? Well, I would encourage them to take the supplements while they're taking the medications. Mm -hmm. And as a pharmacist, it's inappropriate and illegal for me to suggest that they change their medication schedule or reduce dosages. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage them to communicate with their doctor because, for example, coenzyme Q10 is remarkably effective at lowering elevated blood pressure. It's so effective that you can't cavalierly tell somebody when they're picking up their blood pressure medication in the pharmacy, hey man, take coenzyme Q10, it's great. You know, yeah. They need to be monitored and when their blood pressure goes down as the result of the CoQ10 therapy, their doctor has to make the decision to lower dosage or and sometimes discontinue the medication. So they, I encourage people to be in touch with their doctors and communicate with them. And I would oftentimes send physicians copies of abstracts from some studies that document the effectiveness of certain nutrients in um, preventing problems or um, overcoming nutrient depletions based on the drugs. And did you have a go-to brand that you trust more than others? And, or did you prefer supplements versus herbs or tinctures or capsules? Like what would be your most preferred? Well, I... I mostly recommended nutritional supplements because these are what are being depleted by the drugs. Herbs aren't depleted by the drugs. Certainly there are herbal products that are good natural therapies for different conditions, but I was primarily focused on the nutrients that are being depleted. Um, for over 20 years, I've been on the medical advisory board of the Life Extension Foundation. And I recommend their products frequently for people. I know there's a lot of other good brands of nutritional supplements on the market. But the Life Extension Foundation is very, very concerned about the quality of their ingredients and their products. They send or reject a lot of products that come from places where the quality is not up to their standards. So they're very, very meticulous about high quality of their supplements. And so I would say that's the number one brand that I've recommended to lifeextensionfoundation.org and their products. So which supplement would you say that almost everybody should be on? <laughs> well, I think everybody should take um, a good high potency multivitamin, multimineral supplement just as kind of the foundation of the nutritional supplement program. And the reason I say that is that I have studies in my database that show that the nutritional content of the commercially available food supply, supply has been declining regularly, steadily over the last 70 to 80 years. And so nutritional content of the diet has gone down. The level of environmental pollution continues to escalate. So people are getting exposed to more and more toxins all the time. And so we need higher levels of nutrients, especially the ones that are involved in detoxification pathways. So it's just good insurance as far as I'm concerned um, to take a, a good broad spectrum, multivitamin, multimineral supplement. And I emphasize that this is not a one a day vitamin. Um, one a day vitamins contain what we call the recommended daily allowance, the RDA. Mm -hmm. The RDA was never developed to address optimal nutritional supplementation. It's kind of like the minimum wage of nutrition. And I call the RDA the really dumb allowance. Again, it's got nothing to do with optimal health and wellness. Um, when they created the RDA, just vitamin C as an example, if 45 milligrams of vitamin C 
if you don't get that amount of vitamin C on a daily basis, you'll get scurvy. So they went from 45 milligrams as the minimum daily requirement up to 65 milligrams and called it the recommended daily requirement. That's just a little bit more, 45 up to 65. I'm not interested in minimal health. I want optimal health. So I recommend 1,000 or 2,000 or 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, depending on the individual and their health condition. But several thousand milligrams is way, way beyond 65, which is the RDA. So that's my belief in the RDA. And, and I think that it's a good nutritional policy and nutritional insurance to take a broad spectrum multivitamin, multimineral supplement that's a little bit higher than the RDA and in their ingredients. Then omega-3 fish oils are critical. Um, coenzyme Q10 is high on my list of important nutrients. Uh, boosting glutathione is absolutely one of the most um, proactive things people can do for optimal health and longevity. Um, magnesium is deficient in most people's lives. Um, vitamin D is critical. You've got to have vitamin D supplementation, almost everyone. So those are some of the main supplements that I recommend on a really regular basis. And let me turn off my phone so it stops dinging here. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that covers the bases. That's kind of a tier one of level of importance. And then based on individual needs and medications that people are taking and so forth, then there's a wide range of other things that I consider alpha lipoic acid and um, acetyl L-carnitine and prostate supplement for men. And I'm a big proponent of uh, natural hormone therapies for when it's required for women or men. I think all men over 50 should be considering testosterone supplementation. Um, in fact, I'd, I'd say over the last 20 years that I've got deeper and deeper into everything related to health. I've kind of evolved into the science and technology of life extension and anti-aging. As you get deeper and deeper into health, that's where it's all headed. And so I, I now really uh, focus a great deal of time in my writing and my teaching and on my blog and my website on supplements and therapies that are in the, the realm of anti-aging and, and life extension. Wow. So, so besides testosterone for men over 50, could you give us a little hint of what other supplements are good for anti-aging? Sure. Uh, well, I, all your antioxidants are important. Vitamin C, um, vitamin E, although I don't like just alpha tocopherol, I really prefer the tocotrienols. And uh, gamma tocotrienol has got some very interesting studies, uh, more powerful than vitamin E. Um, and some beta carotene and selenium and lipoic acid and coenzyme Q10, they're all important. And I also know that you're a big advocate for probiotics. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I should have added that into the list when you asked what are the primary things I recommend. Yes, I, I am... Dr. Probiotic, <laughs> Dr. Probiotic. I, uh, <clears throat> in my, my regular job, um, I, I mentioned that I brand myself as a natural pharmacist and I work as a consultant, and, um, but I also have a regular job. I'm the scientific director with a company named Essential Formulas. They're based in Dallas, Texas, and Essential Formulas markets premium probiotic products. And we have products that are unique and different than every other probiotic in the world. So um, I'm kind of on the cutting edge of a revolution in uh, microbiome science. And in fact, last year I created a talk that was titled Postbiotic Metabolites, the New Frontier in Microbiome Science. And that talk and that title was so intriguing that it got me invited to speak at a lot of health conventions. Health conventions medical conventions, microbiome conferences. And so I'm, I'm teaching people how to get the best effect out of probiotics. And what we're learning is that the probiotic bacteria themselves are primarily just worker bees. They're little chemical factories. And the way that they function is that your probiotic bacteria digest fibers, the dietary fibers that you consume and they convert those fibers into secondary compounds that we refer to as postbiotic metabolites. 
And what we're learning is that these postbiotic metabolites are the master health regulating compounds for the entire body. They influence and regulate every single organ system, especially the brain and the immune system. And so Dr. O'Hara's probiotics is their flagship product for essential formulas. It's based in manufactured in Japan and my company, Essential Formulas, has the sole distribution rights to import and market Dr. O'Hara's probiotics in North America, in Mexico, Canada, in the United States. And Dr. O'Hara's probiotics are made in a fermentation process. We have large 80-gallon fermentation barrels in a sterile warehouse, and we start with 12 strains of probiotic bacteria and we shred and add dozens of different types of organically grown foods to these fermentation vats. And the bacteria then get to digest the food that we've supplied with, uh, them with for three to five years. The three-year fermentation process is called Dr. O'Hara's Original Formula. That's sold at the retail level in health food stores and vitamin stores. And then the five-year fermentation process is called the professional formula, and that's only available through healthcare professionals. Within this multi-year fermentation process, the bacteria break down the fibers in the food and produce these postbiotic metabolites. So we now have independent research that reports that Dr. O'Hara's probiotics contain over 500 different postbiotic metabolites. And the reason these are important Postbiotic metabolites have anti-inflammatory activity. Some of them act as antioxidants. Some of them stimulate the growth of healthy new epithelial cells in the lining of the GI tract. And if you have an inflamed GI tract with dysbiosis, you have highly inflamed cells in the lining of your GI tract, and you need to replace them with healthy new cells. Um, some of the postbiotic metabolites will rebalance the acid base level. When people have dysbiosis and an unbalanced gastrointestinal tract, the acid base balance in the GI tract is anywhere from 10 to 100 times too alkaline. You have to get it back down to a slightly acidic level, which is the optimal level of acid base balance in the GI tract, just slightly below seven. And at that level, you promote the growth of healthy bacteria and you suppress the growth of pathogens. Some of these postbiotic met metabolites are direct and natural antibiotics, they directly kill pathogens, they stimulate um, gut-brain communication. There's just a multitude of functions of these postbiotic metabolites. And a healthy microbiome and a healthy individual, you need to have a diversity in your microbiome. And a diversity of bacteria, many different types of bacteria, means they will produce a wide diversity of postbiotic metabolites, and that's how you get stability and greater health. In the probiotic industry, most companies and many people are fixated on the numbers. Mine's got 30 billion, mine's got 50 billion, mine's got 100 billion, and they think that more is better. A healthy microbiome, and the, the factors that are critical are diversity and balance. And when you take really high quantities of one or several strains of bacteria, you're really working against balance and diversity. <clears throat> so Dr. O'Hara's, we have bacteria in Dr. O'Hara's, and there's some of the, the prebiotic food supply in the capsules when it gets encapsulated, but we are primarily a fermented food product that is delivering directly the postbiotic metabolites. Other companies just have bacteria in a capsule. Those bacteria haven't done any work yet. When you ingest probiotics in a capsule, those bacteria have to survive the harsh acid environment in the stomach. And then when they reach the small intestine, they have to locate fiber rich foods and start the process of breaking down those fibers and converting them into these postbiotic metabolites. That all takes time. And many people don't consume a high fiber diet. So there are tens of millions of people taking probiotics and not getting much benefit from them. One of the studies I present in my seminars reported that 90% of American children and adults do not consume the recommended daily allowance of fiber. And so all these people are taking probiotics, but they're not consuming a high fiber diet. And it's not just the quantity of fiber, 
you have to focus on a diversity of fiber, different types of fiber containing foods every day. I have a YouTube video that people can go to. If people just Google Ross, R-O-S-S, and Salad Buzz, B-U-Z-Z, I've got an eight-minute video that teaches people how to make a salad that has a wide range of diversity of fiber, and it saves them an enormous amount of time. My theory is that one of the reasons people don't eat salads often enough is that they're time-consuming to make. I teach people how to process all of your vegetables all at once in about 30 minutes. And then the secret is after I've got all my vegetables processed, squeeze a lemon and mix it up. And the vitamin C in the lemon is an antioxidant that preserves all the processed vegetables. You can store it in a big Tupperware container, stores well for about a week. So most evenings, like four or five nights a week, the main meal for my wife and myself this is our big salad. And when I do supper at night, I go to the refrigerator, I pull out a handful of lettuce, I pull out a handful of this pre-prepared buzz, I put some wild-caught salmon on the, for protein. It takes me a minute to make dinner. And so it's a big time saver for people how, to learn how to do this. Wow, that's a great technique. Yeah. And it sounds delicious. <laughs> I'll send you the link to this so you can put it on the show notes for your listeners to refer to. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. So um, your capsules, they contain, as you said, a little bit of the prebiotic, a little bit of the probiotic, and also the postbiotic. Product. Lots of the postbiotic. So we are, we are the world's leader in the delivery of postbiotic metabolites. And this is the way you get really rapid transformation in the gastrointestinal tract. Digestive complaints are one of the most common complaints in doctor's offices. And constipation, diarrhea, it, it, gas, bloating, inflammation, pain, it, it's ubiquitous. And so we get fast results by directly delivering the postbiotic metabolite. So I call it rapid um, microbiome restoration or rapid microbiome um, repair. Um, so when people want fast results, Dr. Hearers gets faster results than every other product in the world because we're not primarily a probiotic. We're a fermented food that has probiotics, but we're directly delivering the postbiotic metabolites. So these postbiotic metabolites, they can withstand the acidity of the stomach and they well, travel oh, to the yeah. small and large intestine? But Dr. Hearers is also in a patented capsule design where the capsule stays hard in the acid environment of the stomach and then it becomes porous in the small intestine where it's a more alkaline environment. So the contents in Dr. Rahir's are preferentially released in the small intestine. So they don't come into contact with the acid in the stomach. Great. So once you ingest them, is there like a life, uh, you know, do they have a half-life? Do you have to keep taking them daily to get the same effects or does it um, work? I would say that probably um, if you stop taking them, the benefit would decline and probably by 14 days, you'd lose a lot of the benefit. Uh, some of the benefits are going to be maintained, but um, I advocate taking two capsules daily long term. I mean, microbiome health is the very foundation of health. We're not, since the Human Microbiome Project and all the research that has accumulated since we really started studying the microbiome. <clears throat> We're finding out that the gut and the microbiome and your probiotics really are the foundation of health because it's these postbiotic metabolites that control and regulate everything. So that's where health starts. And I think everybody would be um, better off by taking a good quality probiotic. And I recommend Dr. Here so that you directly get the postbiotic metabolites. And of course, there's millions of people that have been born by C-section delivery, so they don't get a good exposure to the mother's vaginal microbiome. Many kids are not breastfed long enough. Many people are taking antibiotics. And then I have recently just uh, created a new category of drugs that I'm educating people about, microbiome disrupting drugs. So it's not just the antibiotics that disrupt your microbiome. Um, things like the statin drugs and 
a uh, lot of the estrogen, in fact, all of the estrogen medications and um, pain medications with opioids and on and on. All of these medications disrupt, I, I've got about 14 different classes of drugs where I have documentation that they upset the microbiome. The non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that everybody takes, destroying the mucus layer in the small intestine, which is where your probiotics live. So the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs don't directly kill your probiotics, but they kill the housing environment where they live. So it's like knocking down a housing complex. You're, you're not directly killing the people, but you're killing the place where they live so they don't have a place to live anymore. So that's how non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, mess up your microbiome. They destroy the mucus layer, which is the environment where the bacteria thrive and survive. Wow. So is there going to be another book about the microbiome and how drugs uh, affect Well, I, I've just written a book about Dr. O'Hara and his life and Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. And it's being edited into two different books. One is going to be a book for healthcare practitioners. It's a little bit more scientific. And the other one will be a book for the general public that we'll probably have in health food stores and vitamin stores around the country. Wow. Well, I look forward to that. That's amazing. So in your opinion, is there a way to um, mold the terrain, you know, so that we're more receptive to changing our species that live in our small intestine and large intestine rather than having to keep on supplementing them daily? Great question. And I think people should supplement daily, but that a healthy microbiome, there are two parts to the puzzle. It's the probiotics and the fiber foods. And so molding the terrain was your question. People have to learn how to consume a diverse fiber rich diet. Otherwise your bacteria are not gonna thrive and survive. So um, I advocate taking um, probiotics. I think it's a, a good uh, insurance policy for everything because people are exposed to so much on a daily basis, just like Chlorinated water that people drink. Chlorine's an antibiotic. It's killing bacteria. Well, it's going to kill the bacteria in your gut also. And heavy metal toxins and things like glyphosate and all the agricultural pesticides and insecticides. We get exposed to so much of this stuff. We really have to be proactive in terms of creating and maintaining a healthy microbiome. So I advocate Dr. Here's Probiotics or another brand, but uh, if you want to really get fast action, Dr. Here's Probiotics with the postbiotic metabolite but you gotta eat fiber. It's, that's critical, critical piece to this puzzle to have a healthy microbiome. What about consuming fermented foods? Fermented foods are great, glad you brought that up. Kimchi and all the other sauerkraut, any fermented food. In fact, the reason fermentation works as a method of preserving foods is that the process of fermentation, the bacteria digest the fibers in the foods and produce things like short chain fatty acids. The short chain fatty acids are creating an acidic environment which suppresses the growth of pathogens. So that's how fermentation preserves food. So when uh, you're consuming the uh, fermented foods, you're getting probiotic bacteria and the postbiotic metabolites that they've made during the fermentation process. Dr. O'Hara just kind of created an external system, this fermentation process in the warehouse that mimics nature. Mm -hmm. In nature, we consume food, hopefully fiber-containing food. The bacteria work on those fibers to create the postbiotic metabolite to regulate our health. Dr. O'Hara does it externally in a warehouse, creating his uh, Dr. O'Hara probiotics by adding fiber-rich foods to the starter strains of uh, probiotic bacteria and allowing them years to produce the postbiotic metabolites before we encapsulate the product. Wow. So I know that when people first start eating ferments, sometimes there's a little bit of gassiness and bloating. Is that something that's circumvented by the uh, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics? Dr. O'Hara's really doesn't have side effects for the majority of people. There are some people that have SIBO, and some people with SIBO can't tolerate probiotics. It's going to produce more gas and, and, more, mm -hmm. and more, more discomfort. And so those people have to try to follow one of the um, SIBO diets. Uh, one's called the comprehensive carbohydrate diet, I think. And the other's called the FODMAP diet. 
Some people are able to correct the problem by following those diets, but a lot of people are not successful, and they end up having to do a regime of antibiotics to clear everything out, and then they need to rebuild their microbiome, but they have to make diet and lifestyle changes, otherwise the situation is likely to reoccur again. So it's not just a magic bullet treatment, they have to really address diet and lifestyle issues also. So since you brought up diet and lifestyle, what are your like top two or three tips that you think everybody can benefit from in that diet it, or lifestyle sphere? Thank you, bet. It, it's, it's really easy. Just eat real foods. I advocate organically grown foods, fruits and vegetables, and your protein should be from healthful proteins, either grass-fed beef and goats and sheep and so forth, or um, cage-free chickens that are, uh, and also cage-free eggs from cage-free hens and so forth. Um, but one, a term that I like is food without labels. It has to be natural food. It's not got a list like this of all the different natural or artificial things in it, you know. So, uh, so I advocate a, um, a health-based diet. Um, I was a vegetarian for years. I'm, I'm not a vegetarian anymore. I just advocate a healthy food diet and, um, and, especially healthy protein sources. So many people go to restaurants or, or buying fish that are farm-raised fish. And the, even when some of the um, beef are called pasture-raised, if you don't examine it carefully, you find out they're pasture-raised and then feedlot finished, which means they transfer them to a feedlot for the last 60 to 90 days and just feed them grain and fatten them up. And there's antibiotics in there. And so you need to just we got to be proactive to eat healthy foods. Stay away from processed foods, stay away from junk foods. I do advocate intermittent fasting. I think it's a wonderful health regime. Um, you should go 12 to 14 hours at least without eating from 7 or 8 o'clock at night until noon or 1 o'clock the next day. That is a fabulous lifestyle plan for long-term health. Um, if you stop to think of it, uh, our ancestors did not wake up in the morning and go to the refrigerator and pour some milk on Cheerios. You know? <laughs> they didn't eat three meals a day, and they had to work, they had to exercise to get their food. And so it was a totally different scene uh, back for 99.9% .9 of human evolution. And to that end, what do you? what's your stance on grains and gluten? Um, I advocate being gluten-free. Um, Dr. Alessio Fasano is a wonderful physician. I hope he wins the Nobel Prize. He discovered zonulin. And zonulin is the protein that's expressed in the gut when you have inflammation. And zonulin opens up the tight junctions and allows leaky gut or intestinal permeability to happen. And Dr. Fasano says the two leading causes of elevated zonulin and leaky gut are bad bacteria and gluten. So you got to get the gluten out. And many people eat gluten and don't have symptoms. But just about everybody has symptoms, even if they're asymptomatic. So it would behoove people to put more emphasis into being gluten-free. And I advocate organically grown foods, just to avoid all the pesticides and insecticides and so forth. Yeah, well said. So I know you also have an interesting um, technology called Beamer. Yeah, so I do. Talk a bit about that. This is a, a really fascinating story. Um, Beamer, B-E-M-E-R, stands for Bioelectromagnetic Energy Regulation. And it belongs to a field of medical devices called PEMF, which stands for Pulsed Electromagnetic Frequencies. Electro... Let's see, how do I... How to, uh, energy healing has been used for thousands of years. Uh, now we're starting to have science develop to a point where scientific research can study and document and verify how these energy healing techniques work. And the field or the industry of pulsed electromagnetic frequency medical devices is exploding in popularity because these devices really do work. 
they are effective. Pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices are, most of them are kind of a yoga-like mat that people lie on. And the electromagnetic frequencies are generated and enter the body and they cause your microcapillaries to pulsate at a faster rate. It's called vasomotion. And so increasing the rate of vasomotion results in a dramatic increase in the circulation in your microcapillaries throughout your body. Most people don't realize that your circulatory system is about 14.5% veins, 11.5% arteries, about 74% of your vascular system is over 70,000 miles of microcapillaries. This is what Beamer is doing, dramatically increasing the circulation to the 70,000 miles of microcapillaries. So when people do Beamer sessions, you lie on the Beamer mat, it's, the protocol is eight minutes twice a day, every single cell in your body starts to receive more blood supply, more oxygen, more nutrients. Everything starts to work better. Because of FDA regulations, we can't promote Beamer or any of these PEMF medical devices as a therapy for anything. But we can tell people that they dramatically increase circulation. And what people find is that many health conditions start to improve when you increase the oxygen and the nutrient supply to all the cells. It also stimula stimulates the lymphatic system, so people start to get better removal of, of toxins and wastes from all their cells throughout the body. Um, decrease in all types of discomfort throughout the, throughout the body. Um, more oxygen to the brain is kind of a no-brainer, and people <laughs> are concerned about maintaining their cognitive function, and and not going down the path of dementia and Alzheimer's disease and so forth. And for people who are uh, suffering from type 2 diabetes, these people have a dramatically increased risk for things like diabetic ulcers and peripheral neuropathy and blindness and amputations. Those are all conditions that develop due to poor microvascular circulation. So we don't promote this as a treatment for anything, but just about everything starts to improve when you do Beamer sessions. And another really important um, thing I like to bring up with the Beamer sessions, is people frequently finish an eight minute Beamer session and they get up and they say, wow, I feel like I have more energy. You do have more energy. Every cell in your body just got flooded with more oxygen and more nutrients. We have a human clinical trial where people were doing Beamer sessions twice a day for four weeks, excuse me, three weeks, twice a day for three weeks. And let me let this call go through here a little reputation here. And, uh, excuse me. <laughs> no worries. So a human clinical trial, uh, people doing Beamer sessions twice a day for three weeks. They got an 18% increase in mitochondrial ATP production. So ATP is the, the cellular currency. Every single reaction in the body requires ATP for energy supply for it to, to function. And so getting an 18% increase in ATP production is really quite a remarkable statistic. And this was a specific study on the Beamer unit. And I tie this into the mitochondrial theory of aging. There are a number of theories of, of aging. The free radical theory of aging was one of the first ones. And and now it's kind of evolved into the, the most recent theory of aging. It's called the mitochondrial free, ra uh, uh, free radical theory of aging, where they think that one of the primary causes of aging is free radical damage to your mitochondria. And when the mitochondria are damaged, then the cell can't produce enough energy. And when the cell can't produce enough energy, eventually cells die and tissues die and organs start to die. Beamer sessions are generating more mitochondrial energy, which starts to reverse this whole process and, and really improves the health overall. Um, and there are a number of groups of people that I really recommend um, start to look into Beamer as a, a possible way to really improve their health. Um, people who are invalids, who can't exercise on a regular basis, people that are in wheelchairs or have had surgery, or the elderly who generally don't exercise 
um, regularly or intensely. Beamer increases the circulation. We, we know that circulation is important. That's one of the major benefits of exercise is it stimulates circulation. If you can't exercise for one reason, Beamer is going to do it for you. I'll never stop advocating regular exercise. But for many people who can't exercise, Beamer is a great alternative. Um, many different health conditions will benefit from Beamer, but I can't really recommend them because of FDA restrictions. Um, another group of people are the people that are overweight. Again, that kind of goes into a category. A lot of people don't exercise regularly. Um, let me see, who else do I target? Um, there are thousands and thousands of athletes, professional athletes, that are using Beamer regularly because it gives them more energy so they get more power so it can improve their performance, but it also speeds the recovery after workouts because it reduces pain and discomfort and speeds the, the recovery process. Another interesting fact about Beamer is that the pulsed electromagnetic frequencies stimulate your osteoblasts, and osteoblasts are the cells in bone that stimulate new bone growth. So you're stimulating new bone growth every time you do a Beamer session. This was discovered initially by an orthopedic surgeon back in the late 1970s and 1980s. His name was Dr. Robert Becker. And he is now called the father of bioelectric medicine. Well, Dr. Becker started initially playing with salamanders. And if you tear the tail of a salamander off, the tail will regrow. Dr. Becker put these pulsed electromagnetic frequencies on the salamander and it vastly accelerated the regrowth of the tail. Mm. So the next thing Dr. Becker did, since he's an orthopedic surgeon, he had access to patients that have what they call non-union fractures. Somebody gets a broken bone, six months, nine months, 12 months, it does not heal. Mm -hmm. Pulsed electromagnetic frequencies on, it stimulates the osteoblast and the non-union fracture will new bone growth and it heals. So now orthopedic surgeons are aware of this or around the country more and more orthopedic surgeons are starting to use this. Um, Nassau, this is an interesting story. Nassau a number of years ago started to investigate pulsed electromagnetic frequency medical devices for their ability to stimulate bone growth because astronauts lose bone mass during space flights. Mm -hmm. So NASA evaluated all the pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices available and decided Beamer was the best. They tried to reverse engineer Beamer's technology and they were not capable of doing it. So they came to Beamer and said, is there a way we could get access to your technology? So Beamer signed an agreement with NASA and now NASA is using Beamer's technology to build the next generation of spacesuits so that astronauts lose less bone mass during their space flights and then they have a faster recovery process afterwards. Now that's a, an interesting story related to Beamer. And another thing I'd like to emphasize, Marina, there's a lot of competition out there. There are a lot of companies and a lot of pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices. Everybody's claiming their unit is better than everybody else's. Uh, Beamer has been in business for over 20 years now. They have five international patents, and if people get in touch with me, I'm happy to supply them with more of this information, but most of the companies on the market have what's use what's called a sine wave or trapezoidal wave as their type of frequency in their pulsed electromagnetic frequency. Mm -hmm. Beamer is radically different than everyone else on the market. Beamer's signal goes like this, 1,200 mm -hmm. oscillations of different amplitudes per second, it's called a disruptive technology. It's totally different than every other medical or PEMF device on the market. So that's one of the unique things about Beamer. Uh, Beamer also has a sleep program, and sleep problems are epidemic in this country. So after people get adjusted to Beamer, you can put the coils underneath your mattress pad, and it will run automatically at night for four hours. It runs for two hours when you go to sleep, and then it will come on automatically two hours before your anticipated wake-up time, running at very low frequency levels that entrain your brain waves to get in more time in REM sleep and deep sleep cycles. Some people are concerned about being exposed to electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs and cell phone towers and Wi-Fi mm -hmm. towers and so forth. 
those are in high frequency ranges, megahertz and gigahertz. Beamer and the other pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices work at very low electromagnetic frequencies in the range of 5 to 30 hertz, which is the range of the Earth's natural electromagnetic field. So we're not using some radical high frequency type of uh, frequencies, we're using things that are in the natural realm of Earth's electromagnetic frequency. Uh, just a little bit more about the background and, and the technology involved in these pulsed electromagnetic uh, frequency devices. And if people get in touch with me, um, my email is ross, R-O-S-S, at naturalpharmacist.net. I'm happy to send out information about uh, the Beamer units and some of the technology and um, Beamer is the most widely scientifically, scientifically studied of these pulsed electromagnetic frequency devices in the world. If you do a Google search for any of Beamer's competitors, and, uh, competitors, you don't find any studies that have been published. There are 12 Beamer studies indexed on PubMed. There's over 75 Beamer studies um, in the nationwide scientific literature. And let me grab something from my bookshelf, just a second. Okay, sure. This is a 533-page book that has all the Beamer scientific studies in it, and so I share this with uh, any medical people that have an interest in the medical studies on Beamer, and this is a little Beamer brochure that I've made that I can send people a link to that kind of reviews Beamer's benefits and the underlying technology and some of the information about it. So I'd be happy to send this out to any of your viewers free of charge. That's a little bit more information about Beamer. Um, and let me talk a little bit about price too, because this is something that everybody wants to know about. <clears throat> the price for a Beamer Pro unit is $5,990. Now, a lot of people think that that's a little expensive and they balk at the price, but I teach people how to get a zero interest Citibank credit card. When you purchase your Beamer with a zero interest Citibank credit card, your payments are about $350 a month for 18 months. So that makes it manageable. And after you sign up and purchase your own Beamer, if you sell a Beamer to someone else, you get a $1,500 commission. So many people are turning Beamer into a new source of income. Uh, so it becomes a, a, an income generating potential rather than a big expense. So that's um, what I teach people to do. And, and I really uh, kind of specialize in accelerating people's Beamer learning curve and helping them learn how to get uh, functional and uh, comfortable talking about it. I oftentimes get on three-way calls with a new Beamer owner. If they recommend it to somebody else, then we can do a three-way call and I can discuss it and they can listen to me as I explain it to people. And one of the things I say in my bio is that I'm bilingual and my two languages are English and science. I read that. I can talk about the science so that real people can understand it. And so that's what I specialize in with Beamer. I can really describe and explain how and why Beamer works and all of its benefits so that people can understand it. That's wow, that's fascinating, and, and I await more research. Yeah. Through, you know, yeah, well, could... topic I can jump in here with if we got time. Um, Go ahead. Okay, I am a big advocate of detoxification. I think if people want to help a healthy aging process, you need to be focused on some detoxification protocols because we get exposed to so many toxins these days. For hundreds of thousands of years, people lived natural lives and they did not have to worry about the toxicity of their environment. But these days, the environment is so toxic, we have to spend time and take effort and be proactive to detoxify. It's not just trying to avoid toxins, that everybody has to do that, but you also should be taking steps to eliminate toxins. And there are two things that I really recommend. One is a high uh, infrared sauna. Um, infrared saunas are fabulous. And there's a brand that I like more than any others. It has new technology. It's called the Relax Bar Infrared Sauna. Most of the infrared saunas on the market 
have a mixture of near infrared, medium infrared, and far infrared. It's only the far infrared wavelengths that penetrate an inch to an inch and a half below the surface of your skin. And they heat up the water molecules in cells, and the water molecules vibrate, and that causes friction, which causes heat. So the far infrared wavelengths heat up your core body temperature. And when you heat up your core body temperature, your body's defense mechanism is to sweat. And many of the toxins are stored in the fat-soluble deposits in your skin. So the far infrared wavelengths are also solubilizing the toxins in your fat deposits. And when you're sweating, you're sweating out the toxins. So far infrared saunas are a phenomenal, effective, fast way to detoxify important point to um, stress is that after you do a far infrared sauna session, you need to jump in the shower right away and rinse yourself off because you don't want those toxins that you've just um, excreted to get reabsorbed into your body. You want to rinse them off and get rid of them. So I'm a big advocate of far infrared saunas, and I think the Relax brand far infrared sauna is the best one in the world because 90 to 95 percent of the energy produced in the far infrared sauna from relax brand is the far infrared energy um, if people purchase a relax brand far infrared sauna from my website they get a 70 dollar discount the next thing i want to talk about in terms of detoxification is glutathione glutathione is called the master antioxidant it's made in every cell in your body and glutathione probably protects more of your body than all the other antioxidants combined. So it's really, really important. Glutathione is also the master regulator of all your detoxification. Until recently, you really couldn't take glutathione orally and get any benefit from it because it gets broken down and destroyed. But my company, Essential Formulas, has a line of products called Regactives, and it's called R-E-G apostrophe A-C-T-I-V. Our Regactive product contain a very unique strain of probiotic bacteria called Lactobacillus fermentum ME3. We call it ME3 for simplicity. And the unique feature about Lactobacillus fermentum ME3 is that it synthesizes glutathione. So although glutathione is not effective when you take it orally, if you take the RegActive capsules with Lactobacillus fermentum ME3, when they get in your intestinal tract, they synthesize glutathione. In a human clinical trial, people taking uh, Lactobacillus fermentum ME3 for four weeks got a 49% increase in the ratio between reduced to oxidized glutathione, which means your tremendous increase in your active glutathione levels. And the other unique statistic in these clinical trials with humans People taking ME3 get a 26% increase in total antioxidant activity. So what's happening is the glutathione that the bacteria are producing isn't just having a glutathione effect. The glutathione is also recycling and reactivating oxidized vitamin C and vitamin E and oxidized coenzyme Q10 and lipoic acid. So all your antioxidant protective mechanisms are boosted by taking lactobacillus fermentum ME3 and boosting your glutathione level. Um, some of the studies that I present <clears throat> when I do seminars on RegActive and Lactobacillus fermentum ME3 and the importance of boosting glutathione levels. We've, we're familiar with telomeres and telomerase. Mm -hmm. Telomeres are the little plastic-like caps on the end of your chromosomes that present, pr protect them from unraveling. And every time you have a cellular division, these little telomerase, excuse me, um, telomere caps shorten. And the rate of shortening of your telomeres is the rate of your aging process. And when they get down to the end, then you have accelerated DNA damage. The protection is gone. We now know there's a direct relationship between glutathione levels and the shortening of your telomeres. The more glutathione you have, the slower your shortening of your telomeres and the higher your levels of the enzyme telomerase, which actually increases the length of your telomeres. So um, telomeres and telomerase were actually responsible for the Nobel Prize a number of years ago, and they're called biomarkers of aging. Now we know that glutathione is a reliable biomarker of aging because of its link to telomeres and telomerase. And in some of my slides and my presentations, I show that every single chronic degenerative disease 
is associated with low levels of glutathione. So boosting your glutathione levels is one of the most proactive things that people can do to slow down their aging process. And our regactive products with lactobacillus fermentum ME3 is the most effective way to boost your glutathione levels. You can do intravenous glutathione, go to a doctor's office and get intravenous glutathione. It's very effective, but it's cost effective and it costs money, it's time consuming. IV glutathione is only effective for two or three days. You got to go back to the doctor's office again for another IV glutathione infusion. So that's not very user friendly. There are some liposomal glutathione products on the market that are getting better absorption, but nothing comes close to taking the regactive products with lactobacillus fermentum ME3 with the bacteria are actually 24 hours a day synthesizing glutathione. And a, a daily dose of the regactive products contain 8 billion viable ME3 bacteria. That's like ingesting 8 billion little glutathione manufacturing plants. So this is really a, a revolutionary breakthrough in medicine and health to be able to boost your glutathione levels on a daily basis. At, um, it's available at health food stores or online at Amazon. Great. Wow, that's fascinating. As you were talking, I had a million questions pop up, but I think we'll have to save it for the next podcast episode okay. with you. Um, so I'm just fascinated by your drive and motivation. Um, what you know, what drives you to do this work and to research and to share this with the world? I am passionate about health, and I am a dedicated health educator. I will share this information with anybody that's interested that wants to learn. That's kind of my professional commitment in life. After I got out of regular retail pharmacy, I, I became a health educator and I, I write books and write newsletters and blog. my blog post is extensive on my website and I have PowerPoint educational programs. And, um, and now that I'm the scientific director with Essential Formulas, I'm really passionate about the microbiome and probiotics, and I'm happy to share my passion with people. Great. So we're coming to the end of the interview now, but there is just a couple of last rapid fire questions if you're up for it. Sure. Okay. So what's your advice for pharmacy students that are interested in the more natural model? That's a great question. <clears throat> There are a couple of organizations that have nutritional certification programs. Um, I am a member of one called the International and American Association of Clinical Nutritionists. I think it's one of the better organizations. Um, they have a parent organization called the Clinical Nutrition Certification Board. And the Clinical Nutrition Certification Board creates an exam that the people need to take in order to pass and get their CCN, their Certified Clinical Nutrition Certification. Um, and there's a recertification exam that people have to take every few years. So they have to stay up with the new literature on a regular basis. So I think this is one of the most um, prestigious clinical nutrition certifications. And I encourage pharmacists to, if they want to get into um, true healing um, part of their profession, use your scientific background to start to study natural medicine. That's what I did. You've got a good scientific background. You know some physiology and some anatomy and some biochemistry. Start to study nutritional biochemistry and take one of these courses that where you can get certified as a clinical nutritionist um, and take some courses in herbs and, and look into homeopathy. And, you know, there's a lot of different things you can get into. Um, depends on where your interests lie, but start looking at natural medicine and uh, advocate getting one of these certifications as a, as a clinical nutritionist. Um, another profession that I'll mention just briefly, chiropractors. Chiropractors who get certified as clinical nutritionists have fabulously successful practices because they integrate clinical nutrition and diet and nutrition and lifestyle advice with their chiropractic practice. And it it's a wonderful pairing of things. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'd be happy to advise them, mentor them. Um, I'd, I'd love to see more people uh, shifting out of the traditional medical specialties and getting into more natural medicine and natural therapies and so forth. So I'd be available to help people with that. 
Thanks so much, Russ. Um, very generous of you. So what's the number one thing listeners can do to improve their quality of life right now? Just one thing. Boy, there's, there's got to be three things. <laughs> <laughs> you got to eat healthy. You've got to exercise regularly. And Beamer is my number one recommendation for healthy aging. Increase your blood supply and your delivery of oxygen and nutrients to all the cells in your body. There is nothing in the world like Beamer to improve the health of every single cell in your body. So that's my, my triad of, of important benefits. Healthy eating, regular exercise, and Beamer, Beamer on. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so what's a hobby or a downtime pleasure of yours? Um, my hobbies are exercising and reading. I'm an, uh, I'm an infomaniac. You know, I, um, <laughs> and I'm in a men's book group, so I don't just read scientific things. I, I read novels and other types of books on a regular basis. Um, I never get enough time to read. And in my life, I end up traveling a lot, teaching seminars all around the country and going around for a different presentation. But when I'm on air time, airplanes, I get to read. I never get enough reading time. So um, I would say exercise and reading. And my wife and I love uh, theater. We go to um, plays. My, the little town where I live here in Ashland, Oregon, has got wonderful world-class theater and movies. And, and there's some wonderful entertainment on uh, the different series on Netflix and Amazon Prime now, so we're addicted to some of those series. <laughs> yeah, the new binge watching. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite beverage? Oh, my favorite beverage. Ooh, that's, um, I guess I'd have to, and it's probably going to shock you, I'd have to say beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <term -based. laughs> when I was going to college, uh, for several years, I worked in a brewery, and I got to love beer. And so I drink a beer most evenings. It's just my evening cocktail. Um, I'm a beer lover, and I don't binge drink. I don't get drunk, and I don't have hangovers, but um, I love beer. And I, I also love really healthy, natural coffee. I don't put sugar and sweeteners and, and cream and all that sort of stuff in it. Just healthy coffee has some wonderful health benefits. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and some of your guilty pleasures with us. <laughs> it's been um, a real treat and a real pleasure to speak with you, Marina, and I look forward to maintaining a, a relationship and a connection with you. Likewise. So uh, I'm going to have all the information we spoke about in the show notes, but why don't you just tell the listeners one more sure. time how they can connect with you? Okay. My website is uh, www.naturalpharmacist.net. And my bio and my blog are there. So it's, uh, my blog is a wonderful resource for a lot of different information on different related health topics. And my email address is ross, R-O-S-S, -S, at naturalpharmacist.net. And specifically, if any of your viewers or listeners are interested in learning more about the Beamer, which I, again, stress is my number one recommendation for healthy aging, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to send you information. There's just a wealth of data in fact, I'll, I'll just mention that the whole field of pulsed electromagnetic frequencies, there's over 10,000 um, articles and 2,000 clinical trials that have been published on this. It's a well-documented technology and therapy, not as well recognized in the United States because the FDA has impeded progress on this for a long time. But there's over 4,000 hospitals and clinics in Europe that are using Beamer on a daily basis. And there's over a million users of Beamer in Europe. And, and numerous other countries around the world, but it's just starting to gather speed and get accepted here in the United States. But it, um, Beamer is just an amazing breakthrough technology, and so I'd be happy to share it with anybody that wants to email me at ross at naturalpharmacist.net. And I'll find a place in your local geographic location where you can um, schedule a Beamer introductory session and learn about it that way too. Great. Well, again, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure My having pleasure. you on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch. You bet. I look forward to being right. in touch. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye, Russ. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.